And so now what we want to do is compare the Brayton cycle uh, efficiency with the efficiency for this regenerative Brayton cycle, and we'll do it for certain relationships of T1 over T3. And so let's see what we have there. So let's say if we're going to use K is 1.4, let's say that R sub P is equal to 6, and for the thermal efficiency of the Brayton cycle is equal to 1 minus 1 over 6 to the 0 0.286. And so this is equal to 0 0.4. If I take T3 over T4, a 4. So now I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold the R sub P constant and now what I'm going to do is specify T3 over T4. So let's say that T3 over T4, T3 over T1 is equal to 4, R sub P is equal to 6, then I'm going to substitute in this equation, so I'm going to substitute in this equation and see what the thermal efficiency would be. So the thermal efficiency for the regenerative Brayton would be 1 minus 1 over 4, times 6 to the 0 0.286. So we get here that the efficiency is 0 0.58. So it's nearly 60% versus 40%. And so what we can do is calculate that for a variety of t's. And so figure 1418 has done that. So in figure 1418, we've done that. And so let's look at this figure. So I'm going to have R sub P along here. I'm going to have the thermal efficiency as the ordinate. And if I plot this, this will be for the Brayton cycle. This will be for the Brayton cycle. And then you'll see that the various values of T coming in. T is equal to 2, 3, 4, etc. So that has to do with this value here. So now, should I add a regenerator? So this is, should I, what's the advantage of doing it? If T3 is equal to 4, and let's say that I'm here, so here at 6, if I have R sub P is equal to 6, then this would be 0.4, and then if I went up here, it would be 0.58. And so it's telling me, that if I have this ratio of high, it's worthwhile. If, on the other hand, I have a lower value, like a 2 or a 3, those values coincide with the Brayton cycle. So there's no advantage in having a regenerative cycle unless I have a high enough T3 over T1. So. That, that's the purpose of our having this closed cycle. So for homework, look at 1423 and 1425. And now it's also possible to further improve the cycle by reheating the gas and intercooling the gas. So there's ways to improve the cycle efficiency by Intercooling the compressor, make the compressor be two stages, have the turbines be two stages, have two combustion chambers. So these are all for stationary plants, not anything you'd consider for a, a jet engine. Jet engines are coming. Coming attractions, jet engines. So we could have intercooling reheat. And so, let's do the reheat, and here's where we have two combustion chambers. And so I could have a compressor, goes into combustion chamber, CC1, into turbine T1, comes out, goes into combustion chamber 2, CC2, into turbine T2. 
and then up. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'd have I'd have that, and the TS diagram would look something like. So we go from one to two, two to three, three to four. So we're expanding, we expand three to four, and now we're going to have reheating, so it's going to go back in to a combustion chamber. So we're going to have from four to five, it's going to go up here, and then it's going to expand five to six. In, well, I screwed up. Six. So P1 and P6 are the same. So it, it's taking air in here and it's exhausting air. And that's what the diagram would look like. And so if I look at this for the next page, thank you. We do intercooling. We can do the same thing. And now we can have intercooling and reheating because why should life be simple? So it comes into the compressor C1, goes out into an intercooler. <coughs> out of the intercooler into compressor 2, C2, out of C, out of this, into combustion chamber 1, CC1, into turbine 1. Out of turbine one into a combustion chamber two. Out of combustion chamber two into turbine two. Now in this case, this turbine is going to be driving both compressors. And let's look at the numbering here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. And we can draw the TS diagram. And in this case, with the TS diagram, we have this. So I'm going one to two. So I'm compressing one to two. And now I'm cooling it down from two to three. So the temperature goes down. And we're assuming no pressure drop down to state three. Now we compress it isentropically again to here, state four. So we're reducing the work, but we, it requires more heat in. So it, the, the work is the harder thing here. So then we are adding heat four to five. We expand five to, to, to six. So that's the first turbine. Then we reheat to seven. Expand through the second turbine down to eight. And that gives us the diagram for this. And there are problems, there's an example problem done with this, but it's vastly too complicated for us to worry about at this point in time.